morning. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. This is the day that the Lord has made. And let us rejoice. And let us rejoice. Come on, wake up. Let us rejoice. Come on, stand to your feet real quick. We're going to sing this song. Hallelujah. God is good. And he's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun into the going down of the same. Hallelujah. The name of the Lord shall be praised. Song says, listen. I traded my sorrows. I traded my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Listen. I traded my sickness. I traded my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Come on, sing. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my sorrow. Come on, sing. I'm trading it up. I'm trading my. And I'm laying it down. It down for the joy of the Lord. Come on, sing. I'm trading my sickness. And I'm trading my pain. And I'm laying it down. Come on, sing the joy of the Lord. Come on, all over the building, say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Come on, sing that one more time. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Come on, sing, I'm training my sorrow. Come on, all over the building, say, I'm training my sorrow. Come on, let me hear you sing it. I'm training my Yeah, and I'm laying it down. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. For it is my strength. I'm training my sickness. I'm training my sick. Yeah, come on, sing it. I'm training my pain. I'm laying it down. Come on, sing for the joy of the Lord. Come on, pump your fist like this all over and say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. Come on, pump your fist and say, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Come on, sing that one more time. Say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Sing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Come on, one more time. Say, yes, Lord. Yeah, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Sing. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. I like that. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Listen, when I walked in through the door this morning, I said, wait a minute now. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. And for some reason, it felt really, really sleepy this morning. And so I had to shake myself, saints of God. And I heard the Lord say, wake up. Because my joy and my peace and my love is in the place. And so when we come into his presence... We come into his presence giving him thanks for what he's done. Not only for what he's done, but what he's about to do in our lives. So can you just repeat after me saying this saying, Wake up. Joy is here. Wake up. Come on, say wake up. Wake up. Come on, say wake up. Joy is here. Wake up. Come on, say joy is here. Joy is here. Wake up. Wake up. Joy is Yes, yes, Lord, amen. Come on, come on, sing that with me, y'all. Say yes, Lord. Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes. 
Come on, let me hear you, Mount Tahoma. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Come on, sing yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Come on, sing that one more time. All over the building. Sing yes. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes. Come on, sing yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Come on, sing yes, Lord, amen. Yes, yes, Lord, amen. Come on, sing yes, Lord, amen. Yes, yes, Lord, amen. All he wants is a yes, sir. Yes, yes, Lord, amen. Yes, Lord, amen. Yes, yes, Lord, amen. Come on, give God a hand, praise. Come on, give God a hand, praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. With the fruit of your lips, uh, giving God the sacrifice of praise. Uh, giving God the fruit of your lips. Uh, he deserves all the honor. He deserves all the glory. And he deserves all of the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, everybody. Happy Sabbath, everyone. My name is Elder Errold Robert, and I would like to welcome everyone here and everyone online to Mount Tahoma Seventh-day Adventist Church here in Tacoma, Washington. We're pleased to see, I would say smiling faces, but we know we have to have those masks. But your glowing eyes, amen. Amen, amen. And just, just a few, there's not too many new announcements, but I just want to remind you, everybody, that we are um, starting our nominating committee and we want to make sure that we capture your interest for ministry work. How many know that this world needs the gospel of Jesus Christ? Amen? And you know what's important with that? This world needs you, your efforts to help delivering the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Can I get an amen? Amen, amen. So how you fit in in that, we we're utilizing a, a, a form. It's online. We also have paper versions in the back. And we'd like you all to fill those out so that we can properly place you in ministry. Because the world needs it, but our section of the world is right here in Tacoma. Because the gospel's got to go out, then the Lord will return. Amen? All right. So... Be sure to go online or grab one of those forms in the back and start filling those things out. The deacons will be in the back to go ahead and collect those for you. And also, do not forget that right there, for those of you who are online, there's a link for your tithes and your offerings. And we will also have that available in the kiosk in the back and also with the elders there. Again, we just look forward to the message that we'll have today and blessed to be worshiping with you on this Sabbath. Amen. Now, if you would stay with me, we'd like to open up with prayer. And, you know, there's all sorts of things going on in this world. It'll, 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 it'll push you to the left, it'll push you to the right, but a straight and narrow path is where the Lord is. So if you close your eyes and bow your heads with me as we seek out the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all things. We thank you for this opportunity to come here and worship you, Lord, on the, on, at the time you've, you've set aside. A time you've set aside for us to relax from the cares of this world, Lord. And those cares and those worries are ever so mounting, but Lord, you are above and beyond all of that, Lord. And here we we are now in your sanctuary where we can just rest. Together here, and for those joining us online, we can just rest. Lord, we're praying for those who are ill. There are those who are ill physically. Maybe they've had the COVID. Maybe they're dealing with cancer, Lord. We know that we're praying for those. But in this moment in time, Lord, I'm just praying that your Holy Spirit provide them with rest. 
Likewise, Lord, we're just praying for those who might be troubled in spirit, Lord. Maybe it's a relationship that's going south. Maybe it's a financial situation, Lord. But here and now, as we come to you through the throne of grace, Lord, I'm just asking for your Holy Spirit to provide comfort and rest. Because all these things will pass. Because when Jesus walked out of that tomb, he took every one of us with him on the promise that we will have an ultimate rest from all of this stuff. Lord, be with each and every one of us, Lord. We're each here communing and in worship. Each one of us with a different worry or a different concern, Lord. But let those be put aside as we seek you out in worship. As we hear from your servant, Elder Clarence Julian, Lord, who will provide us the word entitled to shake it off. Lord, we're asking right now that it's you who do the shaking, Lord. That we walk off behind you, Lord. Guide us in all these things, Lord, as we come to you in rest. We're praying for those, Lord, who have yet to hear the word, Lord. We're praying for the strength, Lord, for us to go and deliver it to them. Just like in the Sabbath school lesson today, that they might see you through us. Guide and be with each and every one of us here. In Jesus' name we're praying. Amen. And again, come on, say amen again. Hallelujah. We can stand to our feet. How many know that the Lord is good? How many know that the Lord is good. We're going to sing this quick song, hallelujah. And we want you to open up your mouths and sing along with us. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. I'm going to give God a wave off from real quick. Oh, come on, clap your hands all over the building like this. Clap, clap, clap. Lord, you are good. Come on, say, Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Yeah, come on, sing it, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Come on, sing it, Lord, you are good. Say, Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. How many believe that on today? Come on, sing, Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation, people from every nation and time, from generation to generation, we worship you. Come on, say hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you. Oh, you are. Come on, say we worship you. Say we worship you. Say you are good. Say you are good. Come on, clap your hands all over the building like this right here. Woo! Come on, he's so good. He's so uh, uh, good. Good. Hallelujah. Come on, say, Lord, you are good. Say, Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. Come on, sing, Lord, you are good. Say, Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. Come on, you online, just type in, say, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy. Yes, sir. Say, Lord, you are good. Are good and your mercy endure it forever. Come on, sing, people from every nation. Hallelujah. People from every nation and time. From generation to generation, we worship you. Come on, sing hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you. Come on, sing. Come on, sing, we worship you, say. We worship you, yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you. For who you are, for who you are. Come on, say for 
who you are, for who you are, for who you are, for who you are. You are good. You are good. Yeah, all the time. You are. Come on, say you are good. You are good. All the time and all the time. You are good. Come on, say you are good. All the time and all the time. You are good. You are good. All the time and all the time. You are good. Come on, all the better. You are good. All the time and all the time. We hear you saying, You are good. You are good uh, all the time and all the time. You are for you are good, good uh, all the time and all the time. You are come on, sing. You are good. You are good uh, all the time and all the time. You are come on, sing. Lord, you are good, sing. Lord, you are good at your mercy and your Come on, can we worship God right there? Sing, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good at your forever. Come on, sing one more time. Lord, you are good. Sing. Lord, you are good at your mercy and you forever. I can't stop singing it. Come on, sing, Lord, you are good. Sing. Lord, you are good at your mercy and you forever. Come on, sing people from every nation. People from every nation. Every nation from, from generation to generation, we worship you. Come on, say hallelujah! 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 We worship you. For who you are. Come on, say we worship you, Lord. We worship you. Come on, say hallelujah! 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 We for who you are, 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 you are good. Come on, give God a hand, praise. All over the building, give God a hand, praise. I see you waving back there, sis. Hallelujah. Do I have a witness in the building that know our God is good? He's better than good. song that says he's been better than good to me he's been better than good to me hallelujah hallelujah and when I think of the goodness of Jesus we heard this before in all that he has done for me my soul cries out hallelujah I thank God I thank God I believe if we really look back over our own lives we see everything that he has brought us from our hands or something would automatically just happen because we would remember what he has done it was only because of the love of Christ on our lives can I get a witness in the building please hallelujah real simple song simply says this listen I love you Lord and I lift my voice to worship you. Come on, sing it. Oh, my soul. All over the building. Rejoice. Come on, sing. Take joy. Take joy, my King. Hallelujah, Jesus. And one. Yeah, sweet sound in your ear. Come on, sing that again. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I wish somebody would just lift their hands. Uh, and I hear my voice oh, to worship you, oh, my soul. Rejoice. Come on, think about it. Take joy, my King. Hallelujah. And what you hear, oh, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your. We're going to sing that 
one more time. All over the building, come on, help me sing it. I love you. I love you, Lord, oh, and I lift my voice, yes, to worship you. Come on, sing it. Oh, my soul, rejoice. Come on, take joy. Take joy, my God. Yes, hallelujah. In what you hear, oh, let it be a sweet, sweet. Come on, let it be a, let it be a sweet, sweet. Oh, let it be, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your. I like this part right here. Simple says, listen, listen, listen. To this. We
Come on, sing that one more time with me. You're the only living God. The only one, huh? You're the only Listen. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. <laughs> Let it be a yeah, sweet sound in your ear. Last time, last time. Come on, sing it up. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your Now give him a sweet sound. Give him a praise sound of worship. A sound of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Say amen. Come on, say amen. Come on, say hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory, glory. Are you glad to be here this morning? Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? So if you're glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning, just give the Lord a hand. Probably some of you wondering, what am I doing here? Usually I'm behind the camera with Elder Errol, Sister Imani, Victor, Brother Fred, and the group. Um, but this morning, our pastor had called, and he put me in front of the camera. Come on, say amen. I got promoted. I say I got promoted. Um, my name is Clarence Julian, and it's always good to be in the house of the Lord, as I usually say, God has been good to us. God has been good to me. Come on, you can talk back to me. God has been good to me. And God has been good to you this week. Having been good to you this week, I know he has been good to you because you're here. I will bless the Lord at all times. Do you know it? His song what? Shall, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will say to the Lord that he is my, he is my shepherd, but he is also my rock and my fortress. In him will I trust. This is the day that the Lord has made. I'm just trying to get myself comfortable. This is the day that the Lord has. And let us rejoice and be glad in it. Exodus 20, 8 through 11 says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. And eight thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy neighbor, nor thy daughter, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and rested the seventh day. So this is the day that the Lord has made. We want to welcome you as Elder, welcome you ready, our friends online, not only in Tacoma, um, Seattle, um, around the world, and what I have done, I had shared it on my Facebook page, so I know I'll be getting calls from all over the place. Uh, my friends in Canada, in the islands, um, my sister in the UK, and other parts of the world, I know they are watching, and they will be blessed. Amen? So I ask you that you pray this morning as... We, we, as, as we come together and we look at God's words, that somebody will be glorified, and that only person should be Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? But we pray that someone will be drawn closer to Jesus Christ. Elder Solisbury, I saw you. I wasn't here for Sabbath school, but um, I'm glad that you're here, and um, you have done a wonderful job, as always. Acts chapter 28. Acts chapter 28 as you stand. Let's stand together. The book of Acts. Acts chapter 28 beckons our attention. We'll be looking at verses 1 through 6, 1 
through 6. I'll be reading from the King James Version. I'll read while you follow. And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Medea. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us every one because, because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened itself on his hand. And when the barbarous saw the venomous beast hung on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt, this man is a murderer, whom though he has escaped the sea, Yet vengeance suffered not to leave, and he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen a fallen dung dead suddenly, but after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their mind and they said that he was a God. I'll caption our topic for the next few minutes. Shake it off. Shake it off. Father, again, I am grateful that some of pastors asked me to stand in the gap I'm not worthy. I ask, Lord, that you will clean me up, that you will forgive me for every sin, and that you will cleanse me from all unrighteousness. So as I present, O oh God, a word today that someone will be blessed, that Jesus will be lifted up on high, and your name, O oh God, will be glorified. As the word has, will be spoken, O oh God, that someone Somebody, oh God, probably even myself may say, I yield, I yield, oh God, to the yearning of your spirit. Bless your people now. Bless your waiting congregation. Bless, bless our brethren and sisters and friends, oh God, who are online, just waiting to be blessed today. May you send your Holy Spirit, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. Shake it off. The caption is coming from Acts 28 and verse 5, as you will see, will be the key verse in the entire text. I hate snakes. When I was growing up in the islands, being the oldest of six boys, which was my job, whenever there was a snake found in the house, my mom will call, Clarence! By the time she called a second time, she was already out of the house. Clarence! She would say there was a snake in the house. I will come running toward her asking, where? Where? And she will say, over there. And my mom, in a frantic voice, will say, there is a snake. Then I will grab a stick, a very long stick. Then I will get it out of the house, and then I will shake it off in the bushes. Because they were harmless. They were just searching for a cool place from the hot Caribbean sun. A serpent handling Virginia pastor died after his rattlesnake beat him in church while he was preaching. 
Just as the man had apparently watched a snake kill his father years before. In Acts chapter 27, as we set up for Acts chapter 28, gives the riveting story of Paul as a person in prison, a storm, at a storm at sea. Paul was a faithful witness to the life-changing power of our Lord Jesus Christ. From the day Paul met Jesus on the road to Damascus until he gave his life for his Lord in Rome, Paul was a mighty preacher of the gospel of grace. This passage finds Paul on his way to Rome to stand trial before Caesar. He would spend years as a prisoner in Rome and he would eventually lay down his life as a faithful martyr for the Lord Jesus Christ. As we continue to look at chapter 7, you'll see that Paul and his companions are caught up in a terrible storm. Everyone on the ship supposed that they were going to die. Everyone that is but Paul. In verses 21 through 25, in Acts 27, 21 through 25, it says, After they had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, Men, you should have taken advice not to sail from Crete. Then you would have spared yourself this damage and loss, but now I urge you to keep your courage because not one of you would be lost. But the ship will be destroyed. And why was that, Paul? Because last night, an angel of God, which I belong to, stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must on trial before Caesar in Rome. And God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. The reason why that God has promised that the folk on the ship would be saved is because Paul was on the ship. You're quiet. There is a lot of shooting here in the United States. Beautiful country. But too many guns. Once someone has a, a beef with someone at work, they will go on and, 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 and kill sometimes even their bosses and other folk. By God's grace, I hope it never happened on your job. And probably the reason it never happened is because you were there. Because the same promise that God has made to Paul, he has made to all of his children. That he will protect them. And not just protect them and protect the family. He will protect the surroundings. So the angel... So God, through the angel, had assured Paul that the ship would be destroyed. You will lose everything, but not one man would be lost. Storms, even shipwrecks come in, every, in everyone's life. But storms doesn't have to shipwreck your faith. You can trust God through every stormy gale. You have an anchor that keeps your soul. Are you facing a storm right now? Are you going through problems right now? Is it rocky right now? God got you. In Deuteronomy 31 and 6, God said, be strong and, co and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And one of the famous texts in Isaiah 43 and 2 when he says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. 
and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. God got you. Are you going through a storm? God got you. Take God at his word. Claim his promises. And say to him, God, you promise. You promise that if I follow you, that you would take care of me. And here is my situation. I need you more than ever. And you put God on the spot. God shows up. God shows up in miraculous ways. God is never late. He is always on time. God, you have promised me this and you have promised me that and I need it and I need it now. Father, I'm going through a storm. It's rocky. I need you. You have promised. The storm is too much for me. I can't handle it. I need you, Lord. Life has a way of turning on you. Don't it? All Paul was doing was just preaching the gospel. And he was a prisoner heading to Rome all because he preached the gospel and folk didn't like him. Everyone wouldn't like you as a Christian. Come on now. Everyone wouldn't like you as a Christian, especially a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. What Sabbath are you talking about? Any day will do. I have been through many storms. Traveling on the sea of life brings unexpected storms. For 14 days and 14 nights, Paul and 275 other men battled through the storm. But Paul was assured by the angel that all will be well. They lost the ship, but everyone was saved. Now here's another crazy thing in North America. There is a storm coming. I'm from the islands, and most of the storms that hit the islands, the Caribbean islands, usually hit Florida. And you look at the news and the, and, and the government and the city and the mayor will tell the folk, listen, you got to move. There is a storm coming. And some decided, we ain't going to move. But God has promised through the, the angel that promised and Paul through the angel that, listen, you will lose everything, but your life will be saved. Why is that? Because life is more, than, more important than things. Folk is staying with their stuff, and when the stuff goes down, they goes down. Not me. I don't care if I have to walk naked. When the storm comes, I'm gone. Take it all. I got my life. Most important. Mount Tahoma. I want to tell you today that storms will come. In 2 Corinthians 11.25, Paul said three times. The Apostle Paul, he'd been through many storms. He said three times, I was beaten with rods. For the gospel. A grown man, they were beaten. I, I don't know, um, 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 guys will tell you. Men doesn't like the skin to, women neither. But you touch a guy and problems, and there will be the grown man. He said, I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent the whole night and a day adrift at sea for the gospel. Obviously, we as God's people cannot claim exemption from trials and sufferings. Amen. Paul sensed danger awaited, but he understood that God was with him. He knew by experience 
where to place his trust and confidence. We can't always predict them. We can't outrun them. But we can navigate through them by the power and the presence of God. A storm could be a financial hardship. Probably you're going through one right now. I can't complain, but um, I could do better. Probably a personal loss. A sickness or maybe a troubled relationship. We can draw closer to God through them and emerge stronger and bolder in our faith, whatever storms we may face. We can trust God to provide strength, encouragement, and protection. Storms repositioned us. Do you know that? When, storm, when the storm is over, it will not be in the same place or we will not be in the same place. Storms, I said, storms move ships. A ship cannot remain stationary through a storm. And neither can you I. Or neither. The storm brought Paul to a new place. The captive became a commander. He was repositioned in both influence and authority. The storm was an invitation for a supernatural visitation from God. Through a message from an angel, people realized this. Of, um, 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 and through the message of an angel, people realized this God of whom Paul spoke of, that he was a powerful God. Storm presents opportunities if we see them through spiritual eyes. For example, Moses, raised in a palace, became a fugitive and then a shepherd. Following years of struggle, God called him to lead more than a million Israelites to freedom. Shadrach, Meshach, and that other Negro, and Abednego. All they was doing was serving the Lord. Nebuchadnezzar asked them to bow to a graven image, and they said, I wouldn't bow to the graven image. And because they didn't bow to the graven image, Nebuchadnezzar threw them into a burning fiery furnace. They were going through a storm. But as I said, whenever you put God to the test, God always shows up. When Nebuchadnezzar, um, the Bible says, look into the, uh, look into the furnace, he asked the question, haven't we thrown in three? But now I, I, I see four. There is a fourth man walking in the furnace, and it seems that the fourth man is the son of God. God shows up. When we're going through our storms, we are not going through our storms alone. Is it in the furnace? God is with us. Is it through the rivers or the ocean? God is there. Daniel was, thro was thrown into a lion's den. All because he was doing something that I believe that we do daily. And if we don't, we should. He was just praying. He was just praying three times a day and his enemies saw him and they, 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 they told the king, listen, you, you, you signed the degree and you said that no man should pray to any other God but you for 30 long days, but your friend, your good friend Daniel. We found Daniel at prayer and the law of the Medes and Persians could not be changed, so the king sadly have them throw Daniel into a lion's den. But the Bible said that Daniel was in the lion's den all night. It's, it's not my script. But I wanted to say it. Daniel stayed in the lion's den all night. And, 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 and the king knew the kind of a God that Daniel served. The king said that night, no music. No music, my friend Daniel. He is in the lion's den. 
All night, he couldn't sleep. And the Bible says early in the morning, he went, he made his way toward the, 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 the mouth of the lion's den. And he cried out, Daniel! Daniel! Is your God able? And Daniel being the servant that he is, surrounded by lions, the lions were keeping him warm, and he cried out, O oh, king, live forever. My God has sent his angels to close the lion's mouth. The lions were hungry, but they wasn't hungry for Daniel. Amen. Hungry lions waiting to devour you, but it is almost impossible to, in, to, 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 to devour God's people when God's hand is upon you. David, facing a giant named Goliath, repositioned him as a mere shepherd boy to become a great warrior and king. God sometimes uses storms to reposition us for his call and purposes. Let us keep our focus on God, press in deeper to know and to trust him more each day. COVID-19 repositioned me. Pastor, Pastor mentioned the other day, um, he said, listen church, I had COVID. Well, I have a confession to make. I myself had COVID. That's COVID-19. And by God's grace, by God's hand, I'm, I'm okay. Amen. It doesn't seem that major things happen to me inside. I, I, I breathe properly, never lost my taste or, or a smell. God knew I needed to eat. And I needed to smell what I'm going to put in my mouth. A couple of days ago, I got lots of friends in Canada. I live a long time there. My mom lives in Montreal. One of my friends called me. We're almost done. I'm taking my time. One of my friends called me. And um, in Canada, they call me Smat. Smat. So he called me Smat. I say, hey, what's going on? He say, man, I got, I got sad news. He say, man, I got sad news. I say, well, you know, what kind of a news is that? Because I know COVID is out there. He said, listen, I lost my aunt, her husband, and an uncle. All three within a couple of days. I said, oh, man, I'm so sorry. Two days later, Another friend called me from Montreal. He says, Smart, what's going on? I say, I'm there. He said, Well, I got sad news. I got a death in the family. He said, My aunt, you know my aunt? I said, Yes. He said, Well, she passed COVID 19. Her husband passed. And her brother passed, another three. Are you not happy to be alive today? It's not a special that you have done. It's only the mercies and grace of God that you are alive. You're not better than the other folk. I'm, I'm sometime last year, one of my good friends, working in the healthcare system in Toronto, Died of COVID. The doctors didn't help him. They themselves were scared. The, the thing just started. About two months ago, another friend called me and said, um, do you know so-and-so? The family might be watching. I wouldn't call his name. Well, he passed. I said, what happened? COVID. As we pick up the story in Acts 28, which is the 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 where we get our topic from, Acts 28, 21. I'm reading from the New Living Translation from verse 1. He said, once we, and that's, and that's Luke speaking, 
because it seems that he is the one that wrote the book of Acts, so it seems that he was on the ship as well. And he said, now once we were safe and sure, we learned that we were on the island of Malta. Malta in the Bible means refuge. So after the storm, God had prepared a place of refuge for Paul and the men. The people, they said, was kind to us. It was cold and rainy, so they built us a fire on the shore and welcomed us. So Paul and his shipmates became marooned on that island of Malta, and they were met by some very friendly people. Seventh-day Adventists. <laughs> Amen. The people were quick to give the aid and comfort, community services. Now verse 3 says, As Paul gathered a handful of sticks and was laying them on the fire, a, 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 a poisonous snake driven out by the heat beat him on the hand. The people of the island saw it hung in from his hand and said to each other, a murderer. No doubt. The same folk that just welcomed him. Didn't I say we're church folks? Oh, sorry, sorry. The same folk that just welcomed him. The church folk who just helped him out. The same folk who just welcomed him home and, 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 and made that fire for him because something terrible happened to him while he was helping out to keep the fire going. They started criticizing him. The people said, no doubt, he's a murderer. And they didn't stop. They continued in the verse. And, and, and in verse 4, as you look at it, probably when you get home as well, Says, and then they said, though he escaped the sea, justice will not permit him, permit him to live. And not justice as in the law, but, but, but they, they had a God named Justice. So Justice was the name that they believed that if he, if he had done something wrong, should have gotten him. Once Paul was bitten by the snake, the people started saying all sort of stuff. The islanders turned on him. They began to criticize him. A very, they were very suspicious. And they assumed the viper bit Paul because some evil was in his life. They were saying Neptune, that is the god of the sea, had not taken him because he, he went through the storm and he was saved. So the god of Neptune, they believe, didn't take his life. But the god Nemesis, the goddess in charge of dispensing justice, would get him. People are often quick to criticize. Sometimes they do not know the situation, but it's sometimes quick to criticize. Paul didn't do anything wrong. All he was doing was just helping to get wood to keep the fire going. Some of you have been an object, object of criticism from others, I believe. Haven't you? It's true. If you haven't heard something, they do talk about you behind your back. I meant your friends. You are not alone. They talk about me too. And sometimes I do talk about you. Some of the greatest people who ever lived have been criticized by others. Moses, huh? Israel criticized Moses for everything that went wrong. Jesus, even Jesus, faced criticism by his own. His enemies called him a blasphemer. They were mad because he ate with sinners. If they criticize you, don't be mad because they criticize Jesus. And if they criticize Jesus, believe you me, they will criticize you. 
Now verse 5 says, as Paul, and, and verse 5 said that Paul shook off the snake in the fire and was unharmed. Paul was bitten, but he was, but all he did, he just shook it off. Psalm 91, 13 says, You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. Jesus speaking to his disciples and counseling them, he says, I have given you authority, I have given you power, the kingdom virgin says, to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will happen to you that if you're in the presence of God, as I said before, and I'll say it again, that things that are supposed to crush you, circumstances probably that, that crush other people, but you are still standing. That's grace. That's the power of God in your life. As some of the preachers would say, that's the anointing of God on you. Here in the United States, over 8,000 people a year are bitten by snakes, venomous snakes. They receive poisonous bites. The American Red Cross said to prevent snake bites, you need to do these five simple steps. And please pay attention. Just five. Rule number one. Leave snakes alone. Many people are beaten because they are not qualified to handle snakes. So rule number one is, leave snakes alone. Rule number two, stay out of grassy areas. Stay out of grassy areas. Because the grass is not always greener on the other side. <laughs> Don't pick up rocks, but rather, like David, say, Lord, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Don't gather firewood unless you are properly dressed. Make sure you have on the whole armor of God to fight snakes and to fight the devil. I hope you're getting it. Rule number three. Keep hands and feet out of areas that you cannot see. Stay away from places that you don't belong. Snake might be lurking within and you may not know it there are snakes in the nightclubs <laughs> rule number four very simple be cautious at all times the Bible says what? Watch and pray lest you fall into temptation. Because, not, because snakes lurk in cold and dark places. Rule number five. The simplest of them all, I believe. A snake can never be a pet. Don't play with snakes. Eve, in the garden, the most prettiest snake, the Bible says, the most beautiful animal of them all. Have you heard of the coral snakes? Beautiful, but deadly. Leave snakes alone. Snakes can never 
be a pet. I don't care what you see on television. The Bible called the devil a snake. He is, the, he is that old serpent. Don't play with snakes. That is why when Paul was bitten by the snake, he shook it off. Not on the ground. Not in the water. But he shook it off in the fire. Because the presence of God was there. The Bible says that God is a devouring fire. Don't you know that? He shook it off into the fire. Here is another story. Jamie Coots, a pastor, died after he was beaten by a rattlesnake in church. And I'm closing. After he was beaten, instead of going to the hospital, he went home. The police went to his house, but he refused help. They spoke to his wife and she refused help for her husband. Forty minutes later, he was dead. And here's what got me. His son said to the police that my dad has been carrying that snake to church about four months now. And, 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 and it got me. Because the question is, how long have you been carrying your snake? How long have you been taking your snake to church? How long have you been carrying your snakes? This is a place of fire. And if you take your snakes, if you, if you take your sin into God's house and you live with them, how long? How long have you been carrying your snakes? That pastor has been carrying his snakes to church for four years. Four months, rather. And when he was bitten by the snake, when the devil bit him, he wasn't, he wasn't dead, but the police came asking if he needed help, and he refused help. How long? How long have you been taking your, your snake to church? Pastor said something amazing the other day. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting behind the cameras, but I listened. And he talked about Abraham. And I know he's listening. And he talked about Abraham, and he said something about Abraham. Probably he thought I wasn't listening, but I was listening. And as an elder, I have to listen. And he said that Abraham took a knife and something else for worship. These were stuff that were going to hurt him. But he took it to worship. The stuff that is destroying your life, don't leave them at home. Take them to church so you can leave them here. Don't leave them outside so when you, when you leave the door, when you get out of the door, then you can take it up again. Take them to church. That pastor took his snake to church. But he took it so long. How long have you been carrying your snake? Probably it's more than four months. Probably it's been four years. How long have you been carrying your venomous snake? Sinful habits. What's your snake? What's your snake? I, I, don't feel bad because I got snakes. The bottle is a snake. Alcoholism is a snake. Drug addiction is a snake. Crack cocaine is a snake. Methamphetamine 
is a snake. The one probably you think that I'm, I'm from the island. You, you stick it in the ground and it grows. Weed. Marijuana. It's a snake. It's a gateway drug. You start up small and gradually as you carry a snake, you move from marijuana to cocaine. Homosexuality. <laughs> I'm an elder. I'm not paid. It's a taboo, but it's a snake. I know it's taboo. Lesbianism is a snake. Adultery, snakes, hypocrisy, snakes. <laughs> I've been battling my own snakes. Year after year, when I thought I'd shook it off, that snake will show up again. But I continue to take that snake to church and try to leave it here. Probably you are the same. Don't look at me, Peter Fool. Whatever your snake may be, or whatever snake you may have, it's not a pet, it will destroy you. The devil is not out to play. He will destroy you. He will destroy me. My admonition to us today, as Paul has done when he was bitten by that snake, shake it off. Give it to Jesus. He's waiting. He's waiting to clean you up. He's waiting to clean me up. He's waiting to burn up that snake in our lives. Are you tired of carrying that burden? You can leave it here today. <laughs> you can leave your snake at the feet of Jesus. You can shake it off. Jesus is good at destroying snakes. He said, I saw Satan falling from heaven as lightning. Jesus kicked out the snake. The fire is here. Why don't you shake it off? Why don't you shake it off in the fire? Are you willing to shake off your snake today if you have any? If you're willing to shake off your snake, just stand with me. If you don't have any, then you don't have to stand. I'm standing. I'm standing because I've been dealing with not one, not two, but many snakes. But there is something amazing that happened. When Paul shook the thing off, when he, when he, when he shook the snake, the, the snake off and it fell into the fire. The same folk that helped him in verse 6. When you shake your snake, when you finally give it to Jesus, your friends that was waiting when you were bitten, thinking that you were going to die, but because you have given your snake to Jesus.
The same folk that was, in, instead of helping Paul, Paul was there with at least 275 other men, and they just wait and stand by. Then no one said that the Bible never said that anyone went and tried to help Paul. When you're carrying your snake, when you're beaten, friends and sometimes even family, they stand around and not helping. But when they realize that you, you, you have shaken it off, you have given that snake to Jesus, in verse 6, while they were waiting, for him to swell up and die. But when they waited for a long time and saw that no harm came to him, they changed their mind and they said, this gentleman is a God. The same folk they were criticizing. The same folk that didn't help out. When you finally laid your burden at the feet of the cross, they realized you are a new man. You are a new woman. The same folk that used to talk about Clarence when, when Clarence was beaten, but by God's grace, he shook it out into the fire. You guys don't understand where I came from. You guys don't understand, I, years ago I left all my friends and decided to accept Jesus Christ as my personal savior from sin. Some of them gave me two weeks. When I, by God's grace, when I shook my, sna my, 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 my snake off, they were just standing by watching two weeks I will travel back and forth and 20 plus years later they're saying that Clarence is a God Jesus can do the same for you have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior from sin do you want to get rid of some snakes Probably just one and you haven't been baptized. We, we got a baptism coming up in November. Early November. The call of the same bit is coming from pastor or from an elder. It's the word of God. If you want to be baptized or if you're looking for Bible study, just lift your hand. You want to give your life to Jesus Christ. You want to shake off those snakes. Just lift your hands. Lift one hand. Probably do you want to pray for a family member today that are not here and you know that they're struggling with snakes as well? Just lift your hand. You want to pray for a family member that is dealing with snakes and you know that they need to leave the snakes at the altar just lift your hand we'll pray for them today we serve a mighty God and I can assure you based on the word of God that at the end of time when Jesus comes that that old serpent that, that great snake will be destroyed Jesus will finally shake him off into hell's fire. He will be destroyed. Do you want to go in the fire with him? I don't. You don't either. As we pray today, I pray by God's grace, the same grace that he has extended to Paul, that he will extend it to us. Just lift your hands as we pray. As the arrow get ready to speak to the folk here and online about our offering.
Elder, get ready. Father in heaven, thank you so much, O oh God, for your marvelous word. Thank you, Lord, for your, 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 your mercies, O oh God, and your grace. Like Paul, dear Father, we have been beaten. But we're asking you, O oh God, to have mercy upon us. There is nothing good that we have done. Today, O oh God, as we lift our hands, indicating that we are living our snakes here today, living our snakes at your feet. We ask, O oh God, that you will continue to give us power and give us strength and grace, O oh God, so we can trample. Over not only trample over not only snakes, but also scorpions and, and, and venomous beasts. Forgive us today, O oh God. The folk that are watching online, we ask that they too probably they, they lift their hand because they too are dealing with snakes. We pray, O oh God, that you will deliver them. Deliver the family. Deliver the household. Deliver the co-workers, O oh God, I pray. And Lord, when it shall all be said and done, when you shall burst the cloud of heaven coming back again a second time to take your children to heaven, to be with you through the ceaseless ages of eternity, I pray, O oh God, that everyone that are here and everyone that are watching, everyone that are listening, O oh God, will be a part of your kingdom. And finally, O oh God, that old serpent, that old snake that had brought rebellion in heaven and on earth will be destroyed. No more sickness. No more pain. No more sorrow. No more crying. No more COVID-19. No more mask. It will be glory. Glory. Glory in the presence of God. Father, may this be our prayer today, I ask. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, help me sing. You move mountains. Come on, help me sing that. You cause walls to fall with your power. Come on, help me sing it. Form me miracles. And there is nothing, yes, uh, that's impossible. And now we're standing here only. Come on, one more time. You move mountains. You move mountains. Hey, uh, you cause walls. Come on, sing with your power, with your power. You perform the miracles, and there is nothing that's impossible. Now we're standing here only because you made our way. Amen, amen, amen. What a powerful message. What a powerful message. The imagery of snakes. Rule number one. Don't stay away from snakes. Now, uh, before we depart, just remember that um, if you want to give your tithe and offerings, the deacon is here in the back as you go out. There's envelopes in the back of the chairs. You can fill out your tithe and offerings and you can leave your tithe and offerings there. There's also... Um, small iPad kiosk out there for those who want to use a, a card or anything like that. And for those of you following us online at home, um, there is a link in the comment box that will take you right to uh, Adventist Giving, and you can give. Um, return your tithes and your offerings there as well. So if you can, please remain standing as we do our benediction. And I close this out with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the message again, Lord. We thank you for the imagery and all the illustrations, Lord, that you've put together over the years and give delivered, hand-delivered to us in the scriptures, Lord. 
the imagery of shaking off a snake, Lord. Shaking off the burdens of sin, Lord. Delivering them to the fire, Lord, that is you. So you can burn it up and relieve us, Lord. We ask that we just, not just internalize this, Lord, but as we look to depart, that we, we execute this, Lord. I pray, Lord, as we, we started this, this time together praying for rest, Lord. And I pray as everyone departs, that they do leave their burdens here. Place them at the feet of Jesus. And for those who have requested Bible study and, 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 and baptism, Lord, that you guide them and be with them and help us to help them, Lord. Draw near to you. Be with everyone here. In Jesus' name we're praying. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Amen. amen. I know he said just be seated, but come on, can we stand up on our feet? And let's just sing this real quick song. Oh, blessed. Say blessed. Say blessed. Say blessed. Let me hear you say blessed. Say, listen, poverty must cease, for the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Come on, sing it. We're blessed in the city. God bless you. We're blessed in the fields. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease, for the devil is defeated. We are God bless you, Mount Tahoma. Hi, I'm Paul Smith, lead pastor here at the Mount Tahoma Southern Adventist Church. We're so glad that you tuned in with us and watched us online this Sabbath. As we go through this time of crisis, continue to pray for one another as we pray for you. We're praying for you. Thank you. And God bless.